Before you start your day, we want to bring you three things to know. Number one, Davenport Police Department is recognizing Child Abuse Prevention Month today. The department is inviting the public for pinwheels for prevention. Davenport Police have partnered with every child to plant a pinwheel garden with blue pinwheels. The blue color symbolizes the healthy, happy, and full childhoods of all children and what they deserve. The event will start at 1 p.m. in front of the Davenport Police Department. And two and three, here's Andrew. And a live look outside right now with traffic. I understate 74 off to a quiet start for us right now. A little warm too. We've got temperatures already in the 40s at this hour with some clouds overhead. Next eight on eight takes us into the 50s for this afternoon. A couple showers and thunderstorms arriving a little bit later. We're not concerned about severe weather really today. It's tomorrow. That's once again got our full attention. A threat track level four out of five for the entire Quad Cities. Another opportunity for another significant severe weather outbreak looking likely and even some more strong violent tornadoes. A good possibility too. the timing though on this next round is much different than what we saw on Friday. So we'll go over that where the tornado zone is as well and the setup that makes this one look a little more dangerous than what we saw on Friday. We will track it all coming up. All right, Andrew, thank you. Governor Reynolds now approving requests for the activation of state assistance for six Iowa counties. Those counties include Clinton, Cedar, Delaware, Johnson, Washington, and Mahaska counties. This comes after a storm swept across the Midwest Friday and Saturday. At least 26 people have died, dozens hospitalized in nine states. A trailer park in Mediapolis, Iowa was hit by that same tornado, the wind knocking multiple trees over, including one through a roof. Mother Nature re rearing her ugly head as she left broken windows and siding littered across the trailer park. One family we spoke to was planning to purchase one of those trailer homes destroyed in the storm. Another woman, Layla Hooker, has lived in the trailer park for four years, and she says she has never seen anything like this. They told me, your roof's gone. I'm like, what? Then I come out and everything's just destroyed. Not knowing what to think. Scared. Don't know if it, things going to get to a fire, if it's going to, what's going to happen. Layla lives on disability and could not afford insurance for her home. A family near Grand Mountain, Iowa, says that they are lucky to be alive this morning after a tornado destroyed their home. The Mackins home was built by a family member back in 1918. It's flattened today. Joseph Mackin got trapped in the basement under debris, but was quickly rescued. Meanwhile, his son Jake was upstairs and was thrown into the kitchen. I didn't even see it. I had left my room, no windows, and as I made it to the top step, that was just boom. And it's, it's like having a cannon go off next to you. You can't hear or see anything. Next thing I knew, I was on the ground. The Mackins have set up a GoFundMe page with, to help with the aftermath. We've included that on, our, on this story at WQAD.com. Kiwani was also hit hard by Friday storms. Heavy winds uprooting some trees, leaving branches and debris littered across the streets. One home sustained a three-foot hole in its roof from a snap branch. Another resident had their garage flipped over, focusing now on shifting to cleaning up the mess and helping those most impacted. This is the cool thing about, you know, bad things that happen. Three or four people came out of this house. There was a tree across the road, and they started to cut up the tree. And that's, you know, the great thing about Kiwani, the community, and most communities, they come out and they help each other in these bad circumstances. And you can always stay up to date with storm coverage. Just download our News 8 app on the App Store or Google Play. The old Rock Island County Courthouse will soon be coming down. The county board chairman telling us a demolition crew is closer to getting the green light. The company is going through the normal process of receiving a permit approval. Chairman Richard Brunk says it's going to cost over $100,000. It'll become a green space, but the county's long-term plan is building a new facility to consolidate county offices. The structure is expected to be torn down in the next week and a half. Transgender artists in downtown Des Moines had a chance to show off their artwork over the weekend. Hosting at First Unitarian Church of Des Moines, the 2023 Trans Lives Festival brought together over a dozen local transgender artists displaying and selling their artwork. There were live music and drag performances, and artists say that having a chance to recognize their community is more important now than ever before. The amount of queer youth and queer people who have come together to create this amazing event and bring creative people together and bring community together is just, I think, reflects our resilience as a community. And this was the third year of the festival, which is intended to help celebrate International Transgender Day of Visibility.
The kids hopping in the pool for an underwater egg hunt ahead of Easter. This is at Rock Island's Fitness and Activity Center. Children grabbed the empty eggs and then turned them into or turned them in for goodie bags. There were three different sessions for families to choose from. And the Easter Bunny also showing up early in Moline over the weekend. There were gifts left for children at an egg hunt hosted by the city at Stevens Park. Kids had a chance to collect as many Easter eggs as they could and then redeem those for a prize. I love seeing them. The, the screams, the laughs, it's great to see them interact with the bunny. Um, we also had sign gypsies here to have a photo spot, so it's been a really great day. And it was the first time the city hosted the event since 2020 due to the pandemic. On Friday, the Quad Cities River Bandits will be kicking off their 2023 season. I am so excited and to help celebrate. We are taking some of our morning crew live from Modern Woodman Ballpark that day. And so we have a live look from the stadium this morning. We're going to have meteorologist Andrew Stutsky there and our morning show reporter Charles Hart live throughout Good Morning Quad Cities coming up on Friday. But more importantly, we're getting you ready for the first game. River Bandits are going to be playing against the South Bend Cubs. First pitch is at 630 Friday night. I can't wait for like the, all the ballpark food and drinks and all that. I'm so excited. Following the game will be the first year's fireworks show. Have you been to a River Bandits game yet? I did, but I'm not gonna lie. I paid to go play the like go on the little kitty roller coaster, <laughs> and they made me pay entrance fee too. I ended up paying like 50 bucks <laughs> to go on a 20 second ride. Well, you know what? I stuck around for the game though. Yeah, it was a good game. The games good are game. so much fun to watch, Definitely. and I mean. Of course, then you got to have the food. So, Popcorn. yes, you got to be there. It is now 537. Still had a historic performance from the Lady Hawks. How they are reflecting after an amazing tournament play and what is next for Caitlin Clark. And we are tracking, unfortunately, a new outbreak of severe weather in the days ahead. Just as folks are still cleaning up from Friday's mess. Well, another one is likely that being tomorrow. Threat track level four out of five already. What threats we're looking at with this next round and the timing? We are tracking it next. You're watching Good Morning Quad Cities on WQAD News 8.